You are Lazarus. You are the dry bones. You are the prodigal son. You are the lost sheep. You are the people about whom the Bible is speaking who will stand up in the last day when the trumpet is sound. Black people are waking up. Black people are standing up. Black people are rising up and they're going straight into that knee-shaking white man. I keep on having visions that they put me in the auction. A runaway slave till they put me in the coffin. Tears in my eyes with a noose around my neck. Screaming, Kwam Yasharala right before my last breath. And uh, we all know that it's going to be times where it's going to be hard for us. It's going to be difficult for us where we try to warn people and they want to do their own thing. But... You know, uh, keep in mind Matthew 10. I'm not going to go through all of it right now, but it's pretty much saying, like, look, you can't put anybody above the Most High. Not your children, not your wife, not your father, not your mother. Whoever is putting other people before the Mashiach, why, oh, Yahweh, why, Yahweh Shai, is not worthy of Yahweh, why, Yahweh Shai, huh? So, uh, for one thing, with our family, you know, we are all of the same mindset that we're going to move forward and do our best. We're going to continue to, to, to pray for that boy and do whatever we can for that boy, but that is the most highest child first, huh? So, I just wanted to, uh, to say that, you know, we're doing all right. It is a rough time, and uh, just continue to keep most, uh, I mean, Jay, in uh, your prayers to the most high. Huh? Hallelujah. 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 That's a deep thing, man, because uh again, uh for your young brothers. Alright? You know, this is this is real life. This that was a major example, even for you, young brother. That's a major example of what can happen to you when you decide to go against the grain. You understand me? You understand me? Uh, the lowest of us up here, we just seen this coming up. You see, we seen young brothers get locked up. You know what I'm saying? And even worse, no longer walking the planet because they wasn't doing the things that they were supposed to be doing. Now, guess what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I was thinking about this. They, they, they got a harder charge. Why do they got a harder charge? Y'all got a harder charge because y'all know the truth. You understand me? When we coming up, I ain't, ain't no excuse. But we didn't know the truth. We didn't have fathers in our homes. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have strong brothers and elders to look to to teach us this truth. Y'all got it. You ain't gonna have no excuse. Now Jay Sean is learning that. And that's why the Most High's got this fire on his behind. So hopefully the Most High brings him out of this. But it ain't no joke. All right? You mess around and go out there, play around and do some madness like that, you might end up dead. Real talk. Understand that. You understand me? Huh? Look up this cat when y'all get a chance. Y'all got y'all phones, right? But after after Shabbat, y'all look up this cat named what was his name? Lil Lil Yummy, in Chicago. Yeah, look him up. See what happened to him. Fourteen years old, put to death. He's out there acting a darn fool. In three days, Chicago will mark an infamous anniversary that shocked the nation. Twenty years ago, eleven-year-old Robert Yummy Sandifer was executed by fellow gang members after he killed a fourteen-year-old girl. Fox 32's Craig Wall takes a look at how the danger of the street has changed in two decades. When Robert Yummy Sandifer was shot in the back of the head and left for dead in a pedestrian walkway at 108th and Cottage Grove, the crime was so shocking it made the cover of Time magazine. 1994 was a violent year in Chicago with 930 murders compared to last year when there were 415. But for many, the streets of Chicago don't feel any safer. He went down that path that unfortunately Jay Sean walked down, and it ended up bad for him. All right? It's, so not, this a game. Game. it's not a game at all. At all. So y'all better pay attention. Understand me? Keep doing what you're doing, all right? Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. You understand me? I mean, and the key for all this, not to be long-winded, I'm going to be really short. The key for all of this is maintaining order. See, he had an order that he was supposed to adhere to, and he defied that order. His mother has an order that she must adhere to, and that she defies that order that the Most High takes over. Us men, we have an order that we must adhere to. If we defy that order, we defy the Most High. So all of this is order. It's not just about children. It's not just about boys. It's about make sure you play your part. Make sure you are living to, uh, true to the design that the Most High have formed you in. If he formed you to be a child right now, make sure you pay attention to your mother. If he's formed you to be a young man, when an older man speaks to you, you make sure you adhere to the law of that older man. 
for the women. You must make sure that you adhere to the law that comes from the ones that the Most High have placed over you. For us men, we have the greatest charge because if we don't adhere to the Most High plans, everyone below us feel the heat. Everybody. So make sure that we we uh that we stay true to this order that we keep in our faith, man, because it's not a game. God, God, this thing is real serious. How is trying to destroy us, our children, you name it? And if we don't stay on point, man, we have some problems. So again, y'all keep keep J. Sean lifted up in prayer. But the most important thing that you pray for J. Sean, I'm gonna be honest with you, it ain't for his release because he need to sit down for a minute. The most important thing that you pray for is that the most high pour upon him that true spirit of understanding in proper order like his uncle just was bringing up. So he can get his soul right. You understand me? Sometimes you need to sit down and you can get that understanding. Trust me, I felt it. I was, <laughs> after a while, a couple times, okay, I don't want this. I ain't trying to be at this point. You don't want, you don't want jail, I'm telling you. It's no fun. No to have these, you know what I mean? Have these Gentiles on and your faith telling you when and when you can't do something. Eating that terrible food, being behind bars like an animal. Even animals shouldn't even be locked up like that, right? <clears throat> so think about that. It's really not. He go on days without eating because he refused to eat the ham sandwich, the bologna sandwiches. He up here fighting the nurses because he don't want his immunizations. But you ain't want to listen to me. But you ain't want to listen to your mother. The most high took over. Word. So, I mean, it's no different for any of us. Just know that, man. Just know that. Um, so that's something to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, man. All right, so Proverbs chapter 8. We'll pick it up at the first verse. Okay, so real quick before he starts to get in there, while y'all finding y'all place in y'all scriptures, uh, do y'all remember when we were going over uh, the wisdom writings before and I was saying that, look, you got to pay attention to the way that these scriptures are written. There's a first person where it has the Ruach speaking of itself, then the second person when the Ruach is speaking to us, right? And then there's third person where the Ruach is speaking or someone is speaking about someone who is not present, right? So first person would be like, okay, well, I walked to the store. Well, I was there because I'm talking about me walking to the store. Now, the second person was to say, hey, he walked to the store. That's me witnessing somebody else. So I was, I saw that as a fact. I saw this man walk to the store. Like, how was your walk to the store? That conversation happens in the second person. The third person was saying, is, is to say like, oh, well, you walked to the store, right? Well, I wasn't there. I didn't witness it. Or he walked to the store. Right, saying that this person that's not present, they walk to the store. That's third person. So right now you're getting ready to watch the uh, the, the ruach speaking second person, and I say that because this is personal. It's literally talking to us, speaking to us. This thing have witnessed us, not just this thing, right? But the spirit of wisdom have watched us, have been with us, have have uh, bear witness of our beginning. Our, our, our middle, where we are right now, and is aware of our end. Do I have everybody attention? You all on the same accord? All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse 1. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Go ahead. She stands in the top of high places. By the way, in the gates of the paths, she cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. So right here is pretty much just saying, look, the spirit of wisdom is seeking us out. But it's not enough of us who are conscious that we also have to seek wisdom. Wisdom is at every corner, it's on every hilltop, it's at the entrance of every gate looking for the children, looking for those who are searching for her. But we are not looking for wisdom. Wisdom is literally crying out at every street front. But we are not searching wisdom. All right. So look and see what, what wisdom is saying to us. Go ahead. Verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. So she is literally calling out to all the men. You remember when we were going through order? 
And I was saying that there is a, a, a order for us on earth, and there's also an order in the heavens in Shamayam. So the basic order in Shamayam is the Most High, the Mashiach, right? And then the Mashiach controls everything under him, the angels and so on and so forth, right? Now on earth, that order starts with the man, woman, then the child, okay? Uh -huh. So we have a spirit of wisdom from the heavens calling out to the leaders, the rulers on the earth, those who are adhering to the most highest order. Look, listen to me, okay? Go ahead. Verse 5. Oh, you simple. Understand wisdom, and you fools, be you of an understanding heart. Go ahead. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Hold on right there. Now, for one, what is understanding? Who said that? Who said that? You did? You were right. So, jump up to uh, verse 14 real quick, and we want to see that. She said, uh, understanding is wisdom. That's profound. Verse 14. Verse 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Now, this is wisdom speaking. It went from second person to first person. Start speaking of itself. Wisdom said, I am understanding. So when you have an understanding of something, you did not get it of yourself. You were granted the spirit of wisdom, right? That's why we say hallelujah, because it wasn't us that had us have this understanding. We can't have this understanding unless the Most High first chose us and opened our eyes so that we can receive this understanding. Huh? Uh -huh. Maurice. Yeah. Uh, so that was verse five and verse six. Salah, Salah. Maurice, where your Bible at, bro? You need one? Okay, hold on. Got it. Yeah, do that. Why they can't share one book? Pardon me? Why they can't, they're sitting right next to each other. It doesn't matter, sister. They need their own book. What are you talking about? You sleepy, bro? Go over there and get you some water, man. I'm going to fall asleep, man. Calm, calm. Can you go over verse 6 again for me, huh? Verse 6. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. So the spirit of wisdom is only going to speak to us righteousness. She's only going to speak those things that's going to nourish us. She's only going to speak those things that's good for us, mind, body, and soul. Con? Con. Go ahead, up. Verse 7. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. See? She's only going to speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to those lips. All right? So uh, real quick, let's get a precept for that. We're going to jump to uh, St. John chapter 4. Now this is the spirit of wisdom speaking. And wisdom just said, I only speak truth. Jump right to it. The book of Yachanan, chapter 4, and verse 23. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Yahweh is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, you got to understand that the spirit of wisdom is a spirit, and she only speaks truth. This is the only way we can truly praise the Most High. Y'all see that? Wisdom is spirit. Wisdom is truth. Huh? All right, so let's jump back real quick. Y'all, I ain't going to go, I ain't going to be too long with it on this. I started going to that a little bit. Just be conscious of the fact that this is a right now thing. Uh, verse 23 said, the, but the hour come and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in both spirit and truth. Because the Mashiach was having a dialogue with a particular woman which, or where he was saying, hey, uh, our forefathers always had us worship at this mountain. Jacob drank from this well. You're going to tell me that the true worshiper is going to worship in Jerusalem and not here? And his response, 
in a short way because he said more than just what I'm saying right here. But he said, look, the time is coming where the only worshipers, the only true worshipers is not going to be a subject to geographic location. But the true worshipers is going to worship the Father in spirit and in truth, meaning they're going to desire the Most High. They're going to desire his laws, his teaching, his instruction, right? And they are going to research to know the truth. You're not going to be able to sway them with uh, with rhetoric talk, with uh, smooth speeches. You're not going to be able to sway these, not the ones that worship the Father truly. Huh? All righteousness is in Torah. All righteousness is in Torah. Righteousness does not exist outside of Torah. These laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Outside of that, you will never find righteousness. Not on another planet because everything belongs to the Most High. Just know this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 9. Uh -huh. They are all plain to him that understands and right to them that find knowledge. Now, now what is knowledge? Well, well, let me just give you the definition real quick. Uh, if you was to look up knowledge in the, uh, in the Strong's, right, you're going to have H- one eight four seven. Okay, knowledge is H one eight four seven. Knowledge is a perception, skill, discernment, and it says understanding and wisdom. But if you was to look at the BDB, it says simply to be cunning. Okay, so knowledge is information. Knowledge is information that you can research, that you must go after, that you can attain. That's what knowledge is. Not to be confused with wisdom. Okay, wisdom, well, we're going to get to that later. But this is what knowledge is. So if you are to have knowledge and understand these things, you must study, read, and research and acquire these skills so that it can alter your perception, right? So that you can have a spirit of discernment. That's what knowledge is. Y'all all with me? All right, let's go. Verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. Go ahead. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Now real quick. I really like this because in verse 10 it says to listen. And uh, I wasn't even thinking about looking up this thing in the uh, in the Paleo Hebrew. However, I, Mom Dukes had me watching this guy today. He had said something that was really profound. And I didn't even realize it was going to be part of this. Uh, however, he was saying how our people in ancient times, those who understood uh, pictograph and Paleo Hebrew, right? When you said, when, when they thought of the law, when they thought of Torah, it wasn't nothing burdensome. If you, he, he was actually saying that if you were to tell them to draw the law, he was actually explaining the difference between how the English language is abstract and the Hebrew language is concrete. So a lot of the definitions that we will have in English, a lot of the definitions that we will have in English, uh, it can be altered. I can sit up, we can all say one word and all give a different definition or a different opinion of what that one word is. This never existed in Hebrew. In Hebrew, one word or one definition meant one thing. It had one function, and that was it. So if you was to draw love, you couldn't draw love. If you was to draw faith, you couldn't draw faith. But if I was to say draw a tent, you can draw a tent. Because everybody knows and agree what a tent is. If I was to say draw a nail, you can draw a nail because everybody see and agree what that nail is. So that's the, the benefit in looking up these meanings in the Hebrew. So, uh, real short, when you see, listen, right? Well, first law. The law, was, if you was to tell them to draw law, he said they would draw the rain. Because the rain was coming from heaven. It was coming from above. And it nourished everything that it touched. The rain fell down on the plants. It, it made the, the barks of the trees uh, tender. It absorbed it through the bark. It absorbed uh, the nourishment through the roots and made the ground fertile. And this thing actually went to make the tree uh, grow. It made the tree firm and it, the tree bear fruit. Now, another thing that they will uh, consider the law was when this fruit dropped from the tree. 
because that also fell from above. Now they will go and eat the fruit. Now that fruit nourishes them. This is how they characterize the law because the law came from above. Huh? Whenever we listen and adhere to the law, does it not nourish our spirit? Does it not keep our body safe? Does it not make sure that we have long life? The scripture does say that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Most High. Huh? Uh -huh. Is that not what Torah is? Uh -huh. So the law to them was as rain, and to listen was the same. But to instruct was love and safety. So when right here, and this was to listen, right? So in verse 10, when it says, receive my instruction, wisdom is literally saying, do what I tell you to do, listen. Wisdom is like a mother. I love you. I'm not going to tell you nothing wrong. Even if you don't understand me, don't go around the corner. Them boys ain't right. Look, don't go out the house past 10 o'clock. Ain't nothing good out there for you. You may not know what I know right now. Just don't do it. Huh? This is wisdom saying the same thing, saying receive my instruction and not silver and, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things may be desired are not to be compared to it. Now we have to understand why wisdom just spoke this. Can you eat gold? Gold isn't going to nourish your body. Can you eat silver? Silver is not going to cure a hungry stomach. It's not going to have you to grow up. It's not going to give you knowledge. Money, you can't eat money. It's not going to do nothing for you. Money can't teach you. Gold can't teach you. However, if you was to have the instructions of wisdom, that meant that the father had not forsaken you, that the father loves you, that the father treats you as a child of his own. Huh? Uh -huh. Let's get a witness to that. We're going to jump over to, uh, I didn't even write it down. It's in Hebrews, Hebrews 12. We're going to go jump over to Hebrews 12. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 5. Go ahead. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as children. My son, despise not you the chastening of Yahweh, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Why not? For whom Yahweh loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Okay, so look, if the Most High is correcting you, making you feel bad, making you feel ashamed, hallelujah, Yah, the Most High still wants you. Okay? Huh? Um, Go ahead. Verse 9. Go ahead. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, uh -huh. and we have gave them reverence. Uh -huh. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of the Ruach and live? Come on now. That's a rhetorical question. That's obvious, right? Go ahead. For they barely for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his hope set apartness. Okay, so he says that our, our earthly fathers have scourged us, right? Have chastised us for a short time to their pleasure. Huh? But then he, the Most High, scourged us to make sure that we could come back to him as refined, as fine gold, that we may par be partakers with him of his holiness, of his set apartness. Know why wisdom is saying, choose my words, choose my instruction over rubies and gold. Truth is our gun. We believe it to be man's greatest weapon against the devil.